everybody that's joining in. In a future now moment, we have a ultra equinox surprise today. I'm so excited that we get to have uh, my beloved friends Ruben and Bill and uh, this beautiful crystal skull. Does he actually have a name? Well, we just use the Mitchell Hedges the crystal Mitchell, skull. Yeah. The Mitchell Hedges crystal skull. So this crystal skull decided to surprise us this equinox for a gathering and we've been in ceremony all day today. The vibrations have been super high. So I'm really excited to bring in my friends. Ruben's actually making a documentary right now about the skull. So he's kind of following Bill everywhere. They're doing all these crazy things. He's got everything mic'd in, filmed, and it's really cool to watch the process. So I want to just do a little chat about the skull and where it came from, where it was found, you know. And then we're going to do a um, little meditation together. That sounds good. Yep. Because really the skull is here to help us uplift the consciousness of the planet. And that's what it loves to do. That's what we do. Yeah. <laughs> So it's what I it's my job now that I've been taking the skull around and, and working with people and places in different places and being here this is a very special place of energy and, uh, and uh, today it, just to be here has really been great. We getting everybody and working this energy it's been very powerful. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we, I think you'll feel it because even where you're at when the energy starts moving it'll be coming through to you there. Because we're going to do a little meditation. Yeah, I'm and, already getting hot. <laughs> That's what I know. <laughs> the transmission's coming. It'll, it'll take us on a little trip together. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, let me tell you about the skull a little bit. Yeah, we would love that. Okay. The Mitchell Hedges Crystal Skull. There's a lot of skulls around now, but when the skull was found in 1924, there were only three. That was the third of the, of the skulls. There was one at the British Museum one at the French Museum, and then Mitchell Hedges' skull. And for, at that time, there was no skulls around at all, except for those three. And then in the 70s, it was in the movie with uh, Arthur with Arthur C. Clarke would have it on his show every day when they played it, and they'd have the skull turning. And the skull has a way of connecting with your inner self. And so it opened people's consciousness, because it's here, uh, to help mankind at this time of change to bring them into the higher consciousness. So that's what we're doing. So just go with the flow. Don't think one way or another and just let it happen. And I think you'll find it quite interesting. Yeah, I definitely feel like it's super synchronous that even this is happening today because, you know, my community online, um, most of us uh, acknowledge ourselves as grid workers and these people you know we actually gather every week to work on the planetary grid and to raise our frequency we do these ceremonies every week and to have it kind of line up today was like really interesting because now you know people from all over the world somebody's tuning in from Toronto are going to be able to receive the transmission um, and I think that it's really powerful that we get to do this together it sure is yes it is yeah. so do you want to start a meditation? Should sure. we start it? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> what I want you to do is just get yourself in a comfortable position, wherever it is, sitting, lying, whatever, and just take a few slow, deep breaths and just let yourself relax. We're going to bring the energy and we're going to surround everyone with this beautiful white light, a circle of light, wherever you're at, whatever part of the world you if you're part of the transmission, you're going to be brought into the circle. And now as you close your eyes and concentrate on your third eye, we're going to bring the energy coming down from the higher planes, down, bringing it into the skull, bringing it from the heart of the Father, and now bring this, this from the energy coming from the earth, deep in the earth, bringing it up up from the heart of the mother and bring these energies together expanding them out expanding them out now you feel there's a connection you can feel the connection from the skull going right in your heart and opening your heart to this universal light and love
connecting with the other 12 skulls, connect now. Now just feel the energy expanding, expanding out, raising, rising up. And let it expand wherever you're at and just bringing out around the earth. Send it this light and love. into the soul star chakra about 8 to 12 inches above your head. Visualize there a spiraling galaxy connecting you to the frequency of the 12 spheres. Activating the 12D DNA template allowing our awareness to access all dimensional planes of reality and consciousness. Expanding your soul star and crown chakra into the infinite sky, filled with the brilliance of living light and infinite stars. Stay here in connection with the cosmos and receive this transmission of pure, infinite source light, original source consciousness. pouring down from the spiraling galaxy, from your soul star down into the crown, all the way down into the heart. A brilliant emerald star, activating, emanating, expanding into infinity. Connecting cosmic awareness with cosmic love, reaching our love outwards into the field, into all the beings that are here present in this now moment, as well as any being that tunes in in any future now moment. And radiate that love outwards, 
and to all living beings in this planetary sphere. Fill each cell, each organ, each auric layer with the brilliance of this love. Allow this love energy to waterfall down into our sacral womb chakra, connecting in with our cosmic creation energy, purifying all karmic energies and trauma and distortions, reintegrating soul fragments, Activating ancestral memory. Allowing this cosmic energy to flow down into the earth through your feet. Your vessel becoming an open, pure vessel channel for cosmic oneness energy. In this space where the now and infinite no time exists all at once. The space of infinite creation from which you can create Whew, all that is highest. <laughs> in your personal and planetary experience. Know that this is possible. Visualize the highest frequency reality for yourself and the planet. Visualize all children, all animals are free and joyful and loved and cared for, infinitely supported and nourished. Visualize nature flourishing and pristine and clean and pure and thriving. Visualize healed and clean waters and all of humanity filled with joy and love, abundance, creative fulfillment, sovereignty. All of humanity living in complete alignment with divine source frequencies and original Gaia consciousness. Radiate this energy outwards. <laughs> Mm-hmm.
So if you're feeling called, bring the crystal skull into your heart. Bring the energy into your heart. It might bring you visions or messages or healing. Okay, I'm gonna bring everyone back. Come back gently on the count of five. One, feel the energy. Two, let it go through your body, your out your toes and your fingertips as you're coming up. Three, four, you're almost back now. And five, you can come back whenever you're ready. Five has been counted. Connection, God's love to all of you on this special day. It's so important and coming together today, the work we can do is really very exciting and very, uh, really neat. And wherever you're at, joining in, you're a part of this. And uh, yeah, one of the things the skull does is it works well with sending this energy and raising consciousness. And it's so important that we do that now. <laughs> Ooh, did you guys feel that? <laughs> mm -hmm. Is there anything that you want to say about this documentary that you're making? Yeah, so it's just interesting past, you know, I'm working on Interview with Ed, my show, which he's involved with. Uh, we're going to do an episode, kind of a reshoot tomorrow, right? And uh, that paths sort of crossed at the same time, working with Bill on the documentary, and then told Bill I'm, we're going to go through New Mexico to do interview and some other projects and he, Bill was like well I think the school wants to go to New Mexico so here we are <laughs> <laughs> this is a this area is so important it's a very energized place and it's it's called to be here and I think since the work you're doing is connecting with the grid and the crystalline grid of the earth and in the you know the higher dimensions it's it's really exciting to be here and working with you on this project yeah, it's so cool. I just feel spoiled by the universe that, you know, the big guns have been called out to support us with our work here. Well, we're all, we're all doing our work together. and That's what makes it so exciting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And uh, people are waking up and it's, it's so, you know, and each one of us are affecting other people. And the, there's so many people that are searching the, for this change that's happening in the world and taking charge of our lives and being our, our real self, you know, instead of what somebody expects you to be. And, and making those changes is empowering. We're taking our power back. <laughs> yep, that's kind of the main message of my show and the documentary, so <laughs> yeah. they're, uh, it's all coming together. Yeah, we've, we've been going to different places all over the country and it's, it's been quite interesting, hasn't it? It yeah. kind of keeps us going, doesn't it? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> never a dull moment with this guy. <laughs> Now with this guy <laughs> and this girl. <laughs> yeah. So Ruben's show is on Gaia, and it's also um, I kind of have an updated version on on Vimeo. So if you uh, if you don't have Gaia, you can check it out on Vimeo. Vimeo on demand. Interview with Ed, um, season one and season two. So Ed yeah. stands for extra dimensionals. Just... <laughs> not the horse. <laughs> not Ed. <laughs> Ed. The horse, but um, uh, yeah. So, if you want to like the the show, I cover all kinds of different people and their um, who channel different beings and also experiencers and um, 
you know, this kind of season three is going to be off the charts. It's it's uh, a lot of shamanic work, a lot of um, uh, experiencers, and uh, sort of a little bit different take, getting a little more grounded into the earth. Season one's all out in outer space and aliens. Season two started to bring it down a little bit, and season three it's it's about integrating the the worlds, you know, the old Earth world from the indigenous with our space family and bringing it all together. Very cool. So when do you expect this documentary to be ready? To Ooh, Steve, what do you got? <laughs> um, we're hoping it would be really nice to get something done by the end of the year. That's uh, that's quite ambitious for documentaries. Um, but we've been filming Bill for a little bit now. So um, if not the end of the year, early next year. And it's, it's really interesting because he's going to weave different uh, aspects through it. And oh, there's so many. So many different uh, yeah. storylines that, you know, how it brings lives together. So it's pretty, very, it'll be quite interesting, yeah. Yeah, I really want to hear more about that because, you know, what is your angle going with this documentary? Like, what is what is the, the theme? What are the stories that you're chasing? Well, it, it, it's, um, for me personally, I had, before meeting Bill and the school, I had a dream very powerful dream, very vivid and like real. I even was talking in my sleep, my wife said. And um, what happened was a, a, a UFO, I was like on a, on a cliff or something looking out over a, uh, a bluff or something and then a UFO from the distance was coming closer and closer and closer. And then in the dream I was so excited, I'm like, oh, this is it, it's finally happening. And uh, and I think, in, I think I verbally was like, yes, yes, and I was super excited, and then it stopped. And then it beamed this holographic image of a skull. And this was before I knew anything about the crystal skull. And I was like, that is the strangest thing. Why would, this, why would a UFO be beaming a skull, holographic image of a skull? A um, few months later, uh, or even like a month later, I was at uh, a Bashar event, and, um, and doing, following some interviews, I was doing an interview uh, with someone for season two, and then uh, actually Gita Rose, who was in season two. And we were just like, oh, Bashar will be in town that same weekend, let's go see Bashar, because everybody likes Bashar. And there was Bill with the skull. And then I kind of <laughs> put it up together at that time, and we were with Steve, and, and we were like putting the pieces well, of the Well then the together. interesting thing is with my cousin, you know? Yeah, so then uh, we, we see Bill in the skull and we're like, whoa, that's, uh, uh, that was crazy. And we started getting the ideas for the show for, for, a, for a, um, a, you know, a project with Bill in the skull. Not even, you know, just seeing him at the Bashar event, not knowing Bill personally. Less than a week later, I get a call from a good friend of mine, a stunt man, a uh, stunt coordinator. And he says, hey, Ruben, um, I, I want you to, I want to introduce you to my cousin. Um, I, th I think he might... Be, uh, you might be into the stuff that he's into. You guys seem to share some of the worlds, and his name's Bill. And, uh, and let me give you his number. Yeah. And I was like, all right, I guess this is what we're doing. Yeah. And, uh, so that's that was the start of many, many crazy synchronicities that got us going on this project. And then when you we went out to Mount Shasta, you were just gonna kind of get an idea of it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, we had some really interesting. Things yeah, this, there. yeah, this is this guy likes to attract adventures, and uh, <laughs> we were, uh, you know, just still even now. I mean, it's just flying by the seat of our pants as far as uh, the the types of uh, people and energies and things uh, and, and experiences that um, that come along with Bill and the skull. And I just we found I found Bill's story so fascinating and the work he does. Um, you know, we're we're all doing this work, but. You know, you have a guy here, uh, no ego, he just carries this thing around and goes from, you know, wherever he's guided and pulled to and, and uh, shows up and we're, uh, we're, we're having an adventure. We're having an adventure. But we're this, doing... of all the places I go, you know, being in a place like this with, with you and, your, and the people here, this is my favorite because you have the, the land, the power of the land and the people with the right hearts that are coming together and it's just... That's the exciting thing to see and be a part of. And uh, that, you know, in, in doing this job, I, I help and change people's lives. That's really good. But 
when I can be with people that are on the same path and saying they're out to raise consciousness and bring the races together and make, you know, come to a higher consciousness. And I know you guys are doing it, not only with people, but the land. And uh, to be here and to feel that energy with you guys, you, you uh, you're awesome. <laughs> That's so beautiful. Can I ask you a personal question? Sure. Have you always been this chill? Chill? Yeah, like, like relaxed oh. and nice to be around. Uh, Pleasant. I'm just regular. <laughs> You know, I, I always say, you know, somebody asks you how you are, I'm regular, but regular covers a lot of ground with me. I could be like jumping out of airplanes or whatever, or just sit and have a cup of coffee, and it, it's all covered under regular. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I do. Yeah. It's just, just a regular guy. Yeah. A regular goalkeeper. Yeah. Um, the, one of the, the other things, so the correlations with the show and the messages that have been coming through with the show that, um, that, Sort of reflect this 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 um, the, the the story of Bill and the, and the skull is I feel the skull is a it's a physicalized representation of past and future coming together in the now moment um, because I, I feel like our ET families and, and that and the storylines that come from the ET stuff is sort of like the future um, you know technology and futuristic ways of, of operating, you know, not operating in the, the, the system that we have now, but the, we've get, I've gotten through the show, I've gotten a lot of really good advice and ideas of, you know, how other civilizations have had this kind of transition and how they're operating, and um, and then the past, you know, the, the legends behind this, uh, the, the skull and the ideas that it's ancient Atlantean and prior civilizations. Uh, to us and our old, and our past, we had these connections to to ETs, and you know our indigenous talk about this all the time. So I feel the way the energy it carries is sort of a generational energy uh, through lineages and, and what we're doing with our DNA and 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 how we can track back to you know generations and generations and generations, um, and yet in the future is still to be untold. Um, but it, it brings that together, the ideas, it's more of like bringing those ideas and crystallizing them in this, in this form uh, and, and, and the stories that revolve around it. So if anybody wants to look into the history of, of the legends, I think that's, that's really important because, um, you know, whether, it doesn't really matter if it's, if it's real or not, it's the story and, and that's something that we have through, um, ancient times and, and one of the key things with indigenous cultures is storytelling and sitting around telling the story and the archetypes and they all the indigenous that uh, you know Bill's been around quite a few and they all really have a, they hold a special place for the skull and I think that might be it that they see it as this connector of old meets new and, and that'll be one of the main through lines of the story of the and just this regular guy here. Yeah. <laughs> Is that at all kind of related to like the rainbow prophecies? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you, you know about the rainbow, the rainbow prophecies. Oh, and yeah. It's, it's, uh, they, there's like five different uh, indigenous groups that have the legends of the 13 skulls. And, uh, and everything from the, uh, you know, the Hopi, the Aztec, the, I think the Navajo has it. And uh, the My, uh, Aborigine, yeah, there's... Oh, the Aborigines too. Yeah, the Aborigine is the brother of the Hopi. Yeah, that's quite interesting, because I, I took the skull and went to uh, Australia. And the reason I went there, two years before I was going, the Aborigines were saying that I was going to go there. So when I got there, they were waiting for me. <laughs> and they took me to a place where there was uh, an ancient caldera, and the sun, they call it a sun line, but a, you know, a regular line, had been broken hundreds and hundreds of years ago, and the energy wasn't going through. So they took me out, and this, out in the bush, and they took me to this place, and had me put the skull in a certain spot, and they did a ceremony, and they connected it, and it went from the caldera through the sea all the way to Machu Picchu, is what they opened up. Yeah, 
So I'm, I'm just listening to them, just telling you what they told me. So yeah, That's, so there's been some, I mean, I, I've met a, met a lot of different people. I worked with Grandfather Martin and I have great love and respect for him. He was the prophet for the Hopi Nation and he worked with the Skull and uh, we had a really good connection there. And there's a lot of different ones uh, that, uh, well, uh, Tata. Tata, yeah, he's he's he was interesting. He said the skull is over two hundred thousand years old, and you know what we do is we don't know our real history. That's what we need. We got this history that they told us, and they got it in this book, and they're changing it again because they don't like it. And what it is is the real history of the world goes back thousands and thousands of years, and to really get our back in our power because we need to be taking charge of our own power again. And to do that, we need to find the truth of our self, our spirit, and our people, going back all the way to the beginning and you know, connecting to where, when you say, where's God, and you, raise, you put a finger up in the sky, you're really connecting to the ETs. You know, We need to bring that through. And this is the time for that. We're gonna do it. And connect more with the, there's gonna be disclosure, and there will be a, a balance of, and we'll be working with the ETs too. I feel that in the future. So it's, we're living in a really exciting time. Really exciting time. Yeah, and we're gonna make the best of it because the whole thing is, it's your mind as creator beings. We're all creator beings. And if you want to think negative thoughts, you're gonna make negative things happen. But if you stay in balance and don't let the negative bother you and focus forward, we can make the our, what you were planning and you were seeds you were planting with the thoughts you were saying during our, our meditation. Those are the things that are going to come into our future now. And it's so, that's the excitement of it too. We are in control. We're going to do it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's just the thing about life is, you know, find what you love and go for it. And it, it makes it so much fun. <laughs> Ruben knows so, all about that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've been doing that for a while now. Yeah. Well, it works out pretty, so we've been working out pretty good. Yeah, I was just thinking about that today when we were up there. I'm like, wow, Ruben literally just goes wherever he wants with his cameras and just like films all this cool stuff, and this is what he does. <laughs> well, we did. That was going out on that, on the, on that one area up there. There was. Animals. Sure. No, like, just right today. Oh, today, yeah. Yeah. The, the mountain there. The mountain. Yeah. yeah. That energy out there, and then to work with it and ground that energy with the skull, it was really, really neat. That was yeah. awesome. Yeah. So that's a blessing to all. Sweetie. <laughs> well. Cool. Good. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Well, we're so excited to have shared this moment in time with all of you guys. I'm so excited that we got to experience the skull and uh, yeah, watch out for that documentary when it comes out and- Go watch the show right now. Yeah, Season go watch two. the show. They blow up, yeah, it's kinda, yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, I don't want it to burn. <laughs> Bye guys. Bye. Bye. Are you sure? And.